This past weekend, um, or this past week, my wife and I, we spent some time out in, in Vail, Colorado. And we were at a at the Trailhead Institute uh, Public Health uh, Roundtable. And this was a firearms-related violence prevention roundtable. Kind of a, a mouthful there. And there was there was many things that I, I, I took away from this. Uh, I honestly didn't know what to expect. I, I didn't even know why I was there. Well, I, I knew why, why I was there, but not exactly if, if that makes sense. Uh, Guns for Everyone's been involved in suicide prevention and the prevention of, of just gun violence in general for, for many, many years. So I, I knew why we were there. I knew why we were invited, but I didn't know what my role was, I guess, is the better way of saying it. And um, a little bit of, of hesitation going there and a little bit of hope and, and optimism. And I'll say this from uh, before I get into my my complete spiel about this is that one big thing that I think I might do a little bit different is push the gun industry into their role in all of this, in suicide prevention, uh, community violence, and domestic violence, all of that. So anything that has to do with with firearms and and violence, uh, I think the, the gun industry hasn't done enough. I think the gun industry has a, a, a huge responsibility, but I'll talk about why, right? Because a lot of you guys are already feeling maybe even emotional about that. Um, just me mentioning that, but I'll, I'll talk about why a, a little bit later. I do want to talk about the, the round table and what I learned. And then I could talk about what, what I think the gun industry's roles, my role is, Guns for Everyone role is, uh, Glock's role is, Smith & Wesson. Uh, every local gun range uh, in your area, whether it be here in Colorado or, or throughout the United States. So I'll talk about what I feel is 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 our role overall. But I, I do want to talk about kind of my my takeaways. I, I do have a a few takeaways from this, and I want to list them out. I want to put them up there just so you guys can see, and then I'm gonna discuss them. I'm gonna discuss them uh, a little bit. Hopefully you guys can see if you're on your phone, it might be a little bit more difficult for, for you to, to see and acknowledge. Um, but um, here, here goes nothing. You don't need to see me all that much. But um, my five takeaways from, from this event. Uh, the very first one is this. This is the one where it just kind of confirms what we already believed in the gun community. And this makes it really difficult for me to go to other gun organizations and say, hey, you should be involved. This event started off with uh, the guy that runs it. Um, I, I know his name, I'm not gonna mention it because it's it's irrelevant, but he was talking about an event that he did down, down in Southern Colorado. And it was about this particular topic is suicide prevention, violence prevention, domestic violence awareness, that, that type of stuff. And uh, obviously, Southern Colorado, very rural area. People showed up uh, in, in, in droves, I, I guess, is what he says. And uh, people were upset and people did not take likely to him being there because the thought was that he was there to take their guns. And he had to tell them, nope, that's not what I'm here for. I'm just here to understand your community. I'm here to understand um, what affects you, how gun violence affects you, how suicide affects you, how all of that affects you. I'm not here to take your guns. And so that sounds awesome, right? Like, yay, cool. Like some of these people that work for the government and, and these um, violence prevention organizations, they're, they're not wanting to take our guns. Yay. And then the, the event continued and policy um, conversation happened. Now, I, I will say this. They never explicitly say, we want these laws to pass. So I, I have to be fair. Um, they never once mentioned, I feel, they never once said stuff like, I feel like we should pass this law and there should be more background checks or there should be more of any of this stuff. The organization itself, Trailhead Institute, uh, Trailhead Institute, that's who, who headed this up, in partnership with the state of Colorado. They never once said, let's pass these laws. But 
there was very uh, a, a lot of implicit conversation about policy right and that's the way they say is like well um community organizations and farms owners and, and uh, behavioral health and and uh, the health industry and uh this that or the other all kinds of organizations that would um try and tackle these problems right and, and one of the things that they mention frequently is policy so that leaves the door open for for the policy conversation which for me from a gun owner's perspective is not something i want to have a conversation about now we may disagree on this i i full heartedly believe that i can work with somebody that i disagree with there was people there from gifford there was people there from ceasefire there was people there from other organizations that i do not agree with on the policy issue but we both agree on reducing negative outcomes with firearms. Let's focus on that. Uh, let's not have a conversation about policy. Let's not have a round table that kind of demonizes the objects that I use for, for self-defense or for freedom uh, and, and then try and tell me all at the same time, uh, we really want you to be a part of it. So I, that, that's why I say there's this lack of genuine willingness to work with the 2A industry. Um, I, I'm here as, as a challenge to, to gun people. I'm here as a challenge to anti-gun people. If we're all serious about reducing negative outcomes with firearms, uh, who gives a fuck about the policy issue? Nobody cares about the policy issue. Let, let's just, let's just have a conversation about how we can actually do the work. I don't want to sit here and have a debate about this law or the other law or, or the 10,000 other laws. I don't, I don't want to have that. Uh, we could uh, on some other time when we're having lunch and, and we're just shooting the shit and, and we're just discussing life. We, we could definitely do that. And by the way, after that dinner or whatever, I, we may still not agree. And, and that's fine. But when it comes to doing the work, we, we just got to do the work. And I feel like in this roundtable, I found way too much of the groups uh, unwilling to actually work with the 2A industry. In fact, th this is my wife's story. It's not my story. But so you'd have to talk to her about it. But she did mention that in a few little discussions that she had with, with people, um, we would break out in, in little sessions and have discussions and, and all that stuff, uh, which was fun. And, but she talks about a few times when uh, she had mentioned uh, somebody had bad information about us being limited on, on firearms. And she said, nope. We don't get limited on, on firearms and and that person rebuttaled with like oh so we should start working on that like how does that make me feel welcomed in in this place when you're trying to take all of this so you're blaming me and you're blaming a tool that i use that has never killed anyone has never injured anyone um it, it just doesn't make it seem genuine like you actually want to work with us and one of the things that we have to admit is, is we see the people first uh, you may not like it, but we see the people first. We, we, this is a, a little snippet of what I'm going to talk about a little bit later, but uh, a lot of these people come to the class. If you're talking about suicide prevention, if you're talking about potentially even domestic violence, uh, a lot of these people come to the gun stores and, and they come to the classes and, and it may not start off with them feeling this way, but 20 years or, or 20 days or 15 days or a year or two years, they may feel that way. So the first touch is probably from us. It's not from a government perspective. It's not from a community organization. It's from the farms industry. So um, we we have to get to this point where groups like Gifford um, and, and Gifford is supposedly a, a gun owners thing. Here's how I feel about that. If you tell me I'm a gun owner, but I want all of these restrictions, that's kind of like one of my cousins who's here illegally. Um, saying i'm gonna vote for trump uh, it, it just it, it like what like it, it just doesn't make sense like it's the same thing right when people tell me well gifford is a gun owner but she wants all of these restrictions kamala is a gun owner but she wants all of these restrictions like cool my my plenty of my illegal cousins uh want to vote for trump uh, it's it's kind of the same thing right like when you're voting against your own interest um you do whatever you want but it just it just doesn't make sense it doesn't hold weight when you tell me you're a gun owner that's all for gun restriction it just it just never makes sense so that doesn't that doesn't mean anything to me 
the lack of genuineness needs to change. If you guys on the other side are really serious about working with us, um, let's let's work on it. We don't have to agree, plain and simple. We don't have to agree about policy. I hope next year that that when we go back to this trailer, if, if we're still invited after this video, a uh, that if we're still invited to this uh, round table, there's there's a lot less talk about policy and more talk about how we can actually work together and, and, and solve this stuff. Now, gun people, we have to show up. We have to be there. Uh, we have to be at the table because because they're having conversations without us. And this isn't one of the situations where, where we can make our own table and, and have discussions on our own side. Like, well, no, we, we need to be a part of this. Uh, we absolutely need to be a part of this. So I, I think from our side, too, is is show up and hold them accountable and, and, and hold them to the fire and say, hey, if you're if you're genuine about us working together, let, let's fucking do it. But it's got to be genuine, has to be genuine. It can't be this. We don't want to take your guns, but here's all the policy we support. Uh, then you do want to take my guns. You personally don't have the fucking balls to do it, but you obviously want to push policy that will take my guns. So don't say you don't want to take my guns when you do want to take my guns, just policy-wise. That's not the conversation. The conversation is how do we reduce negative outcomes with firearms? Let's keep it to that. There's plenty of ideas on both sides that that will work if we just avoid the policy conversation. Um, the second thing, the second thing is, I, I don't know if that's how you, you spell it. If there's a typo, I'm sure some of, some of you guys will, will let me know, but it, it seemed like these humans are super smart, uh, really good at, at the data stuff, the data collection. I understand a value to hold data. I understand the value of research. I'm not denying that in any way, shape, or form, but it almost seems like they won't work or they won't start funding or they won't start the implementation of programs until they've collected all the data. And here's one of the, the things that my wife and I were, were kind of discussing a little bit. Like if, if you go into community, a Native American group was, was there and one of the things that they said is um, just that is they don't have enough data. Um, there's there's an issue, and she sees an issue in her community in terms of just violence in general, but but also suicide. And and it seems like not enough attention gets placed on it because there's not enough data, <laughs> which seems silly because I I think if you have enough humans in in whatever community saying hey the, the, there's people committing suicide in in my environment there's people that look like me committing suicide there's there's people that look like me killing other people that also look like me so there's there's violence here um i hear the neighbors having discussions like obviously there is a problem but because they haven't collected enough data they're not gonna send the help to that that is needed that's that seems stupid that seems absolutely stupid and I think that's one of the issues that we see um, in when they have the conversation about community buy-in. Um, they go into neighborhoods such as Montbello or or Park Hill, and and they try and implement this stuff. But first, we need to do the research. Like we just watch the fucking news. Uh, like there, the, there's there's probably a problem there if it's making the news on a regular basis. And there there's some some issues there with how the media presents stuff for sure. But there, there's obviously been a problem. We don't need data. We don't need research. It's, it's, it's there. I think if enough humans say, hey, there's a problem. Uh, I know my best friend's neighbor's cousin committed suicide. I know um, the neighbor's best friend committed suicide. My friend's cousin committed suicide. You get to a point where it's just like data is not even needed anymore. There's, there's clearly an issue. We need to figure it out. And I think that's a problem is they're 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 always waiting for this now i i did see that there's a lot of money in data collection there's a lot of money in research it seems like if you really want to solve problems and you want money to go a certain way just say you're collecting data and you're doing research because all of a sudden money just flows in that direction um i'm not saying they were doing it it just seemed like there was a lot of money that goes into data and and, and research 
that was one of the complaints that I heard uh, saying is that collecting data and collecting research is super expensive. Uh, well, that's a problem. Uh, that is absolutely a problem. When collecting the numbers is more expensive than the problem itself, that, that's 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 kind of weird. Uh, that, that's super duper fucking weird. So that's my other thing is it seems like they were too reliant on, on this data. They 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 won't work unless they have enough numbers, which is a sad thing, right? Because some some neighborhoods will never meet the a threshold that they're they're looking for. Um, populations are different. You have towns that that are barely a thousand people. They may never see a, a, a number sufficient enough for people to spend money there, and, and I think that's unfortunate. I think a a, a, a town of a thousand people uh should get resources obviously they don't need as many resources as say denver but uh they should still get the the resources kind of silly that that they don't get the resources this is how rural areas get ignored a lot uh they get ignored a lot because uh there's not enough data to support it no there is uh there is the other thing is this is kind of um, related to the other stuff. Um, the biases and the red tape involved with with funding. It, it seems like it's incredibly difficult for people to get funding. This is one of the things that I mentioned in terms of bias is that me as a gun organization providing free training and and we do suicide prevention seminars and and we have these very often and i go into communities and and, and i do work shit, shit that i barely even post about in, in in the social media this is probably the first time i've talked about it in in a very long time but I, i've done classes for free with um community organizations that that are focused in all this stuff. so i've been doing this for for a very long time if i go and apply for a a grant uh they won't give it to me the state of colorado won't give it to me the the philanthropists that say they want to reduce gun violence they won't give it to me because of a bias right because i i teach humans how to use guns in self-defense but i'm also very capable in talking about um mitigating risk and, and de-escalation and, and all of the other stuff stuff that is relevant to this conversation but they would never fund us. They would never give us the money. And I would trust me right now, we need fucking money. And they just wouldn't. Uh, they just wouldn't. The process is too long and the, the process is too cumbersome. And a lot of the times it's just uh, very full of bias. They only want to fund people that are 100% aligned with them. And usually what I mean by that is people they know. Um, and this is a conversation that I had with with plenty of the the philanthropists there that that say they give money is like you you guys are too full of bias and way too much red tape in fact one of the common themes when i would say that is like well you just need to fill out the application a little bit different word it differently so in other words lie <laughs> in other words you want me to lie in order for me to get money that, that like i should not have to do that uh, like when it comes to you being a philanthropist when it comes to you funding if it's meeting the goal that you're intending to meet, uh, the everything else, like what my political party is, should be irrelevant. Uh, but if it matters, I'm I'm an independent. I, I don't fall for both of those teams, right? But like if for those of you guys that are philanthropists and listening to this shit, um, I don't I don't care about that stuff. Um, I, I, my goal is to reduce negative outcomes with with guns in this conversation, right? Another conversation might be self defense. Uh, but in this in this space, it's to reduce negative outcomes with firearms. Fuck the people that I, that show up to my classes. I don't want them to get hurt with guns. So we educate them or educate them in a certain way so that they um, can be safe with their firearms and be responsible uh, handgun owners, firearms owners. So, like how I answer words and how I answer forms should should not really matter if we're both on the same mission so and and this is from from my area right i can't imagine the people who are actually doing the work i talked to a lot of them and a lot of them were, were saying the same thing i don't get funding i, I do this because because i believe in it and the problem with that is, is you could only do it part-time and when you could only do it part-time well, you, well, you get part-time results 
uh, these humans should be able to do it full time and they have mortgages and they have um, grocery bills and, and all that. So same problems that everybody else does, but their work is solve a major issue, suicide and violence just overall with firearms. So they, they should get some money, but too much red tape, heard it a lot, too much red tape, really difficult to get this money. That's a problem. That is a, a huge, huge problem. Um, another one, another issue is this one is way too PC. Um, it seems like a, a lot of the work before every uh, breakout session that we had, um, I guess not all of them, but there, there was a few of them where it's it seemed like we we spent way more time talking about how what you felt and uh, what your emotions were and make sure you get represented properly instead of let's just discuss the problem we, we had in each session we had about 15 20 minutes it's not like we had three hours four hours 15 hours 20 hours we just had about 15 20 minutes and five of it goes to how we feel uh, i think when we're talking about uh, suicide prevention domestic violence uh, community violence or just violence in general with with firearms i i think my feelings shouldn't matter now it doesn't mean you you're you're a complete asshole about it um th there is a difference but i shouldn't have to tip to tiptoe around how i teach people just because uh of feelings from the corporate world and a lot of this time it was just from the corporate world the, the philanthropist and the state and and all that shit one of my very extremely radical conversations was let's have handgun training for teenagers. And of course, that that a lot of people are like, well, these are all gang members and shit. Like, I don't give a fuck if they're gang members. If we're going to admit, we, we have to, that they're already carrying guns. You're telling me they're already carrying guns. It's not like I'm anything I say is going to stop them from carrying guns. If they feel like their life is in danger and they're going to carry a gun. The best I can do is teach them how to be responsible with that firearm, start some sort of conversation about firearm safety, start something. And then we can slowly work on the de-escalation and, and, and the traumas and, and all that stuff. Or it might start with the traumas and then we could talk about farm safety. Like, But it, it has to be together because a lot of these people are not getting the training. And, and I, I could already see all of the fucking extreme right people, all of the the, the gun people, and they're going to be like, oh, you're going to teach gangbangers how to be better. That's not the goal. And in fact, you, you're just as ignorant as the other people. When I say ignorant, you just lack information. I'm not like saying anything um, other than that. Like you just lack the information. Some of you guys are just fucking stupid and, and maybe you shouldn't be a part of the conversation because you, you take shit way too fucking far. But when I'm when in this context, when I say ignorant, I just mean you don't have all of the information. And the information is we're not trying to teach gangbangers how to be better shots. We're just simply starting a conversation about, about how to be responsible gun owners. A lot of these people are 15, 16 years of age, 17 years of age, and they just need some guidance. Uh, they just need to understand how uh, not to ruin the rest of their lives. Uh, am I the one to talk to them about traumas? Probably not, but I could probably have somebody there from Walk to Talk America have this discussion with them. So, but they're, they're too afraid is they are too afraid to have the real conversations. They were too afraid. And everybody there was just tiptoeing around about, um, how you feel and how you don't feel. And, um, all of that shit is just like, we're here to talk about people dying. We're not here to talk about fucking saving trees we're not here to talk about how to make and bake cupcakes we're here to talk about how do we stop people from fucking dying that shouldn't die that's the conversation i i, I think there's this is not a place for too much pc-ness uh this is the same argument that i have when we're talking about suicide prevention there's a lot of people who are way too pc about uh, laws being broken I'm I, if a human is going to die, I'm all for breaking the fucking laws we need to break. Uh, take the guns. I don't give a shit if we we need to go through a background check. And I accidentally didn't go through a background check. The, the issue is save the human. We'll worry about the fucking legal process later on. And it's those type of conversations that people don't want to have. And that is that's a shame because it slows down the it slows down the, the work. 
uh, we can't be too worried about being too PC um, to get the work done. We, we just can't be worried about that shit. We just need to get the work done. People are dying. Let's not fucking worry about uh, Edgar saying fuck too many times or somebody calling Edgar a Mexican or any of that shit. Let's fucking worry about that shit later. It's irrelevant when we're here to talk about humans dying. Uh, that's that's the problem. Humans are dying. P that humans that shouldn't be dying are dying with firearms. Let's fucking fix that. Let, let's see how we can fix it. Um, let's not worry about the other shit. That shit's irrelevant. It, it's kind of fucking weird. Uh, also, when when you consider this, like somebody just buried their child and you're fucking worried about somebody calling Edgar a Mexican. Uh, somebody just buried their fucking kid. And what you're worried about is uh pronouns uh somebody just buried their fucking kid and what you're too fucking concerned about is that um somebody's feelings were hurt because of some misunderstanding like if we understand each other's genuine in, uh, in intentions and it's not malicious it's not a fucking negative thing like everything else we can solve later right now we're just here to do the fucking work People are burying their fucking children that shouldn't be burying their fucking children. Um, let, let's worry about the language shit later on. Let's worry about the emotional shit later on. Um, let, let's let's do the work. Uh, maybe I am wrong. May, maybe I, I said something that that is way off base. Let's talk about that. But it shouldn't stop the fucking work. It shouldn't stop the work. Uh, again, I'm not I'm not saying you're you're not. We shouldn't talk about what maybe offended me and what maybe offended you, but like yeah, that's fucking irrelevant. <laughs> like we're we're trying to get to a point where we're reducing gun violence. Um, I'm not fucking worried about who called me Mexican and who didn't fucking call me Mexican. That's just not what I'm worried about. Um, so that's that's that one. And then the other one is the optimistic stuff. I said all the all of the other shit, right? So the 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 mostly bad shit, and the other one though is is the positive. So I'll, I'll kind of end this on the positive, and I'll, I'll talk about the other shit as well. The what our responsibility in the gun industry is, but in terms of this is um, th this is the kind of the the thing that keeps me going is that there was a, a handful of people not a not a ton unfortunately but there was a handful of people who are like yeah you know we we don't have to agree um i don't have to like that you like guns and and i don't have to like that you uh, hate guns and you don't have to like that i hate guns and whatever like we don't we don't have to do that right i am a gun person somebody else may be an anti-gun person and we don't need to agree and there was there was a handful of people who got it. Yep, we're just here to do the work. Um, we might see each other at the Capitol, fighting each other at the Capitol, uh, disagreeing with each other. But outside of the Capitol, we're we're on the same team to reduce negative outcomes with firearms. And and I think that's that's what's going to keep me going with these humans. Firearms injury prevention initiative uh, is does a fantastic job at at doing that um people that that work there if you guys are not familiar with farms injury preventative that's that's a thing that's run by cu um cu and anschutz anschutz uh emergency medicine um it's ran by by um a doctor an er doctor and uh jessica and emmy those are the ones that that run it matt wang camp is is part of that uh, Ray and, and and a few other people. I'm going to forget their names. Jay Jay Hood is is a part of that. Um, they do a really good job at just saying, "Hey, let, let's just find solutions. Let's not worry about po policy." In fact, they they do a very good job at at ending the the whole policy conversation. They just focus on um, on the work. And I think it's humans like that that are are going to get closer to the finish line. Uh, it's humans like that. We, we have to admit that we're probably never going to get to the finish line because uh, this is going to be an ongoing uh, work. Unfortunately, the, the finish line is, is probably going to change because um, if we reduce all of the gun violence, we, we figure that out, then we, we have to move on to the next thing, right? Like we, we have to, unfortunately. Um, it's just life. It's just life in general. And I think most of us are, are conscious of that is um, 
if if it's not suicide with handguns it might be suicide with something else so like we were we're trying to figure out how it's not with anything whatsoever so i don't think we're we're ever done with the the work so that's why the finish line kind of moves a little bit but i think it's humans like emmy betts and it's going to be humans like like jessica and it's going to be humans like ray ray and it's going to be humans like matt and, and jay hood and um i'd like to believe myself and, and a few other people that were there at at this event um an individual by the name of, of johnny he he was there he runs an organization um i believe out in five points that is is aimed for inner city youth uh talk about talking about just violence in general but also suicide prevention i think he has a, a good goal in mind um never discuss policy with him always always just about the work so i i think there are a small handful uh, of human beings that, that are keeping me optimistic that next year when we go back it, it might be a little bit more genuine right the very first one that that i noted it, it might be a little bit more genuine in their intent um in their their willingness to to work with the the 2a industry but it's humans like that that should encourage you as well to be like oh fuck i can work with these people uh, i can work with people that may not 100 percent agree with me on the policy issue but we agree wholeheartedly that we should reduce negative outcomes with with firearms so they do exist they they are out there um, they do exist and uh, for sure they are out there which kind of brings me to to the next thing um and this is one of the 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 kind of hard pills to swallow for for me in in this event and in this two days that i spent out there is this this understanding that the gun industry probably has a much bigger role in this than they are taking um i'm not suggesting it's the gun industry's fault because it's not right i met a lot of people who who lost family members to gun violence um there was one kid who who kind of yelled at me and he wasn't mad at me so i let him yell at me uh but he he yelled at me and and, and talked about how the tool that i use took his cousin's life uh, i don't want to misrepresent the story because it, it's an important story but uh, for me it's just like cool let it let it all out i know you're not mad at me you're you're mad at something else you, you lost a family member that you cared about um so it's not my fault it's it's not the gun industry's fault but i i do genuinely believe that we have a bigger role than the one we're playing when it comes to reducing negative outcomes with with firearms what that looks like i don't know i'm not smart enough to to really point out what exactly that looks like uh for me personally it's it's do what i i have been doing um continue to to do community work um continue to do more classes with with these groups and these organizations and, and not be shy about approaching them and saying hey let's let's do something together Let, let's hold a class let's let's have a conversation um but i i do believe genuinely that that the gun community has a much bigger role than than the one that it's playing i i think that it's i think that that glock and smith and wesson and ruger and uh bursa and and, and name whatever fucking gun company um is kind of in the in the background not doing a whole lot some organizations are um so i take that back ruger ruger is i before i fucking misrepresent all of this shit so i ah see i gotta take the shit back uh avidity arms back here that's the gun that i carry um they've done some stuff when it comes to to financial shit uh, donating money to like places like walk to talk america presenting their their packets and shit like that so they're doing some stuff uh, but i don't think we're doing a as big as uh work as as we probably should be doing being more involved in the communities um taking more kids out to to the range kids that that otherwise would be ignored those quote unquote gangbangers um taking them out to the range and, and understanding that that may have an impact um doing a better job with having the conversations with our friends and family who are gun owners about being more responsible with guns right having the balls to have that conversation so 
again, I'm I'm not I'm not smart enough to really figure out like what our role actually is. Some of you guys are way smarter than I am in, in that context. So hopefully you guys know what the fuck I'm talking about or what it is that I'm trying to say. But I, I do genuinely believe that the gun industry has has dropped the ball when it comes to this. And, and I seen it. I seen it this time around because nobody fucking considered that the gun industry should play a role in this. Uh, there was, uh, again, I, I mentioned these breakout sessions and we, we had discussions about um, certain circumstances. Like when it comes to educating teenagers, who's responsible for that? Well, fuck, the gun industry is responsible for that. It, it, is, it is my responsibility to teach these kids about gun safety. And then I know some of you guys will be like, well, I teach my kids and blah, blah, blah. We're not, well, that's, that's awesome for your kids. Yay. Uh, I'm not going to take that away from them. Good. Glad that your kids have somebody teaching them. But what about your, your kids' friends? Uh, what about the neighborhood kids? What about um, the kids on the other block? And I get it. Some of you guys are going to be like, that's not my responsibility. Well, they live in your neighborhood. And if crime is going up in your neighborhood, it, it kind of is your responsibility because it does affect you. And it affects all of us. And I think it's that mentality that we have to switch. It's not my responsibility. It is when they're trying to take our guns. Um, it is when when every year they're trying to pass a bill because of gun violence. Shit that we didn't do. And I get it. You didn't do it. But if, if you run, if you want to be selfish about it, just think about it that way. The, the reason they're trying to take our guns away is because they have a number to point to. Look at these numbers. They are high. Or they are higher than what it used to. And we could try and rationalize that shit all day long. You and I know that that, that data has been proven to be manipulated day in, day out. I, I get it. Like we, I'm not here to argue that. Uh, I'm on the gun people side about this. I don't want any fucking law to be passed that's against guns, period. I don't want any law to be passed, period. Uh, I'm not a government person. Uh, government fucks it all up. But... It's happening in the state of Colorado every fucking year. They they since 2013 they they presented a, a little thing and it says here's the data, here's the numbers, here's why we're trying to take your guns. So if if we want that to end, I think we do have to be, at some point be like fuck. I don't want that and them to even have that fucking number. So um, let's try and reduce that number, and so that it becomes more difficult for them to manipulate the data for 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 them to even have the fucking data to exist to, to begin with. And then when they go and they they try and take our shit away, we're like, hey, we 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 are working. We're we're doing the fucking work that you won't do, uh, that the politicians won't do. And that's what I'm talking about. You, like, like the politicians, are not doing that work. So yeah, we 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 do have a responsibility. Freedom rights come with that responsibility. Uh, you see, unfortunately, what's going on in 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 the East Coast with the hurricanes down in Florida and 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 how much it affected North Carolina. Um, people got to the point where like, I don't give a fuck about government. We're all going to come together and we're all going to rebuild, um, this, this neighborhood humans did that government didn't do that. And I, I think we, we have the same responsibility when it comes to, um, violence with, with firearms period, whether it be suicide, domestic violence, whether it be just, just violence in general with, with handguns, rifles, firearms, period. We do have that responsibility. Again, the, these rights come with responsibilities. Freedoms come with responsibilities. Um, but anyways, drag this shit on uh, quite a bit. Um, comment, share this, uh, yell about it down down below. And um, here, here's another thing. I, mean, I, I know I already lost a few of you guys when I said that. Um, during the, 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 the event, I asked a few people who asked some non-political questions that I could ask here. And some of you guys had fantastic questions and then other people just went straight to the political shit, um, uh, the tyranny stuff and like, oh, blah, blah, blah. That, that's, that's awesome. Like I, I'm with you guns, tyranny, yay on guns. No, no on tyranny, but like, that's not that. I don't know how that solves suicides. And, and I think we just have to start switching that thinking. Um, when it comes to freedoms, uh, yeah, let's talk about the tyranny and the freedom and the gun stuff, but we have to separate that in our brain. Like that, that's not the same as me being responsible with guns and me wanting to end gun violence. I, I can want to end gun violence and be behemothly against lawmaking. I, I'm, that's me. I fucking hate lawmaking. 
I think making of laws is one of the dumbest things we do. I heavily believe that choosing the lesser of two evils is a really fucking batshit crazy thing to do. I think you voting for somebody who's going to oppress me one way or another is really fucked. Uh, but that's me. So you can believe fuck the law stuff and still do the work. And and I, I think that's the challenge here is, is be all for no gun uh, laws, no gun laws. Uh, be all for that, but also do the work. And, and I think that's my challenge for for the gun community, people in RMGO, people in Gun Owners of America, people at Triple J Armory, people at Bristlecone, people at, well, Jackie at Bristlecone was there, people at any gun range, at any gun store, all that shit. Let's together be there next year and be like, we fucking hate the policy stuff. We're just here to help reduce negative outcomes with guns. And that's what the fuck we're there for. Let's not talk policy. Let's talk about reducing negative outcomes with guns. Um, and, and I think that's the challenge. And on the other side is uh, quit fucking trying to pass laws. Let's just fix. Let's let's get together and and fix the problem. So anyways, um, 40 fucking minutes of me ranting about this shit. But just as a kind of reminder for those of you guys that even bother to be this long, uh, these were kind of my my five takeaways. Uh, the important one, I think, is number five, whether we like it or not, uh, whether you I, I don't know if you agree or not, but I think five is is the the good one is the more important one is because that, that's what leaves room for for continuing the work. Um, but everything else was was there as well. So um, hopefully we do better next year and, and hopefully we we raise a little bit more hell so that we can uh, together collectively reduce negative outcomes with firearms. So. I appreciate you guys uh, sticking around. I appreciate you guys watching this. Share this. Uh, I can't stress that enough. Share this. Um, yeah, without you guys, nobody fucking finds out about this. So um, see you guys next time. Peace.